Welcome back to part three of this video. In this video, we'll introduce the first principle, which is very crucial in calculus. Let's start off by looking at a linear function. We know that the slope is the same across the whole line. In other words, you can take any point on a linear function and find the gradient to be the same. Rise is the change in y values and run is the change in x values. To find gradient, we find change in y over change in x. Sub the two points into our favorite formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we can find the gradient. And we know it's different for a curve. On a curve, the slope is changing all the time. In other words, taking different points will give you different gradients. We know that instantaneous rate of change is when we find the gradient at a given point. But keep in mind that it's just the gradient at that point. So then we ask the question, how do we find the slope or the gradient at any given point along this curve. That's where the derivative comes in. And also you'll see why the limit is very useful here. If we take this curve defined by f of x and find the two points like this, h is known as the horizontal distance between p and q. We can then find the coordinates for the two points and sub them into the formula to find the gradient. This is our revision, so we can write the gradient of the second line pq as the formula here. Remember second line is the average rate of change because the two points don't have to be very close. As we move the second line towards the edge of the curve though, the second line will become a tangent line. And a tangent line is, um, it'll only touch the graph once. And here it becomes an instantaneous rate of change as well. Now we have a second line. We want to make it a tangent line. So we know that we can make h as close to zero as possible and that will give us um, the tangent line eventually. We also know that the gradient of the tangent to the curve of f of x at point p is the limit of this expression as h approaches zero. And this is defined as the derivative of a function, also the first principle. We denote the derivative of a function f of x as f dash of x, and the derivatives is the limit of this expression as h approaches zero. And this is basically what we said in the previous slide. For this first green box, uh, this is what we call the first principle. Please keep in mind that you will always have h in the denominators, and that's because x2 minus x1 will always make the x's cancel each other out. So we're left with h only. So the derivative of the function is the limit of this expression as h goes to zero. And in this example, we're going to use the first principle to find the derivative of this function. Since we know the first principle, we can just sub the values in and find the derivative. Think back to the number machine type of question we um, talked about before. So you have your inputs and outputs, and in this case, the rule is defined by this function. But when my input is x plus h, my output is, so every time when I say x, I'm going to replace it with x plus h. So it becomes x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h. Here you need to make sure that you're subbing x plus h this whole expression into the brackets. So um, we're replacing x with this expression here. It's not a single number. So every time you see x, x becomes x plus h. And when the input is x, the output will just be f of x, which is x squared plus 2x. So f of x when x is equal to x, so when the input is x, the output will be x squared plus 2x, we know this, and when the input is x plus h, the output will be x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h. Now using the first principle, we know the derivative of this function f of x is f dash of x is equal to the limit of this expression when h is approaching zero. So we know these values, we can just um, sub in the values. f of x plus h is going to be, um, actually, let me change the color. Okay, so just change the colors and hopefully it'll make more sense now. Actually, let me move this. Okay, much better. Here, f of x plus h is x plus h squared plus two times x plus h minus, and f of x is simply x squared plus 2x. Now I need to make sure this expression is in the brackets because this is a whole, okay? So this expression, this whole thing represents our y1 value, okay? 
okay? It used to be the y1 value, but here it's f of x, but it's the same thing. So you need to make sure you put them in, in a bracket because we have a negative sign in front. So when you remove the brackets, it's going to change the signs and everything over h. Okay, now let's try to expand the brackets and simplify this expression. So this is equal to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus uh, using distributive law. So 2 times x plus 2 times h. It's going to be 2x plus 2h. And take away x squared minus 2x. Everything over h. And this is actually very nice because x squared minus x squared, so that's gone. And we have plus 2x and minus 2x, so that's also gone. And if I continue up here, we are left with 2xh plus h squared plus 2h and over h. And clearly h is a common factor. So if I divide this by h, that's uh, 1, that becomes 1, that becomes 1, that becomes h, and that becomes 1. And now the expression becomes 2x plus h plus 2. And remember, as h approaches 0, this expression will become 2x plus 2. So here we can say that using the first principles, we found that the derivative of this function f of x defined by f dash of x is equal to 2x plus 2. So that's the derivative. All right, the final example. For f of x is 2 minus x cubed, so that's a cubic function, find f dash of x by first principles. Okay, so now let's write the formula first. f dash of x is equal to the limit when h is approaching 0, and let's use different colors again. So this pink part, so every time when you see x, we're replacing x with this expression here. So it's going to be 2 minus x plus h, the whole thing cubed, minus, okay, I need to make sure I put in the brackets, it's 2 minus x cubed. So that's when x is equal to x. Uh, the input is x, the output will simply be the original function. So this is going to be 2 minus, and if we expand this um, bracket here, it's going to be x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. And we're taking away 2, so it's minus 2, and taking away negative x cubed. So it's going to be plus x cubed. Actually, let me change the color and everything over h. Now let's expand and try to simplify. So we have 2 minus x cubed minus 3x squared h minus 3xh squared minus h cubed and minus 2 and plus x cubed. And here we have a plus x cubed and minus x cubed, so that's gone. We have plus 2 minus 2, that's also gone. And we're left with negative 3x squared h minus 3x h squared minus h cubed all over h. And again, um, h is a common factor, so let's divide both um, top and bottom by h. So that becomes 1, that becomes 1, that becomes h, that becomes h squared. So we have limit when h approaches 0, we now have negative 3x squared minus 3x um, h minus h squared. So as h approaches 0, these two terms will become 0 as well. So the limit of this expression when h approaches 0 is going to be negative 3x squared. And this is going to be our derivative. So f dash of x is going to be negative 3x squared. And yes, we finally finished exercise 17a. So I hope you find this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.